All right. So one of the big contributions of economic history is to really gather uh, data on slavery to understand, you know, what, you know, what it looked like um, in the U.S. What can that data tell us? And so this comes from a bunch of different places, but Wills um, will tell us some information. Heights, like height data is actually um, really useful in terms of um, uh, learning about nutrition. I mean, because part of your height is based on nutrition. We could look at ship manifests as well, uh, as well which will tell us, um, you know, how many slaves are, are, are coming in and then auction data. Um, so, you know, throughout this, uh, throughout the slavery period in the U.S., you know, slaves are auctioned off. And so there is, there's auction data. So there's a lot of kind of data that can be, can be examined um, to understand the characteristics of, of U.S. slavery compared to other places. And so one thing that is striking is most slaves were not brought to the U.S. So the slaves taken out of Africa brought to the Americas primarily go to the Caribbean and Brazil. Um, they're not going to the U.S. Only only 6% overall uh, goes, goes to the U.S. However, what is fascinating is you could go to 1825, 30, 36% of the slaves in the Americas are in the U.S. So relatively few were going there, but then disproportionate large number in 1825. And so what that tells you is the U.S., um, in slavery in the U.S., the mortality rates were lower and the fertility rates must have been higher, some combination of, uh, of those two, all right, which tells you probably the disease environment in the U.S. is not as bad as the disease environment in some of these other places. Now, the mortality rates for slaves while they may be lower in the U.S. compared to the Caribbean and Brazil, they are um, they are much higher um, compared to um, European uh, Americans of European descent. And so here you have the slaves here versus these are the mortality rates for the rest of the U.S. And what you can see is very high child mortality, infant mortality, and child mortality. By the time you get to the late teens, early 20s, the mortality rates are not much higher. So slave mortality rates compared to the rest of the U.S. are much higher really in those infant and um, early ages. And what this suggests is that the slaves, the slave children were underfed and malnourished. Um, Slave women often were forced, forced, forced back to work after three months post-birth, um, and there's descriptive evidence uh, the slave owners describe giving children of slave proportionately less. Um, children are also described as having shiny skin and swollen bellies, which we know now. Back then, they did not know this, but, but we know now that's a sign of protein deficiency. So essentially, we can look at this and see that young children and infants were treated um, very terribly um, on, on, on the plantations. It's only when the slaves become of working age that they start to get um, you know, more food and the mortality rates align with the rest of the US. Okay, um, height data, um, uh, essentially slaves are, are shorter, but then they catch up by age 10, which again, which suggests that the slave owners are um, increasing um, uh, the food allowances um, by that age. So this really can do, this really tells, you know, a grim story, a very, um, you know, a very, you know, horrific story of underfeeding the young children and only feeding um, the slaves a appropriate amount of food once the, uh, not appropriate, but, you know, food, more food when, um, you know, when they were of working age. Slave price data tells us another, um, can give us more information about expectations. So, is the price of slaves. Um, and this right here is the interesting part. The price of slaves was going up before the Civil War. Now, what this tells us is that the expectation in the South of Southern slave owners was that slavery would, as an institution would continue, would persist. So there's a lot of arguments, you know, kind of later arguments, oh, slavery was dying out. Slavery, you know, would have kind of gone away by itself without the Civil War. 
I'm not going to weigh in too much on on those on those uh, on that debate, but at least from the price data, that suggests that Southern slave owners did not think that was the case. Essentially, they if they thought slavery was dying out, this price the price of slaves would be going down, but it's going up. So it tells us that slave owners think that slavery will continue, and two, if there is some sort of civil war, some sort of, some sort of struggle, the South will win, um, because otherwise, you know, if that were not the case, we would see price declining. Um, all right, so we're going to go next into the entrenchment in the South and the general timeline of slavery and its uh, abolishment in the U.S. Um, after this break.